Hey everybody, it's Mike from BrewDashDews.com. I'm just about ready to go in and do a mash for a nice Hellas Lager. Here in the heat, it's going to be a great crisp beer as we go into August. So I'm going to show you how I prepare my water salts, how I get the HLT ready. I'm going to show you how I mix it all together, together in the mash and get the mash going. So tonight's really going to be about incorporating some of the lessons we've talked about for water chemistry and how I put it together on my system. So stick with me. Let's get it done. All right, everyone. So what I thought I would do, because it's so hot out here, is I'm gonna have a beer. I've already mashed in, but I've shot a lot of little clips along the way to show you uh, how I do this, how uh, I do this on my system. So there's nothing magical about it. I'm sure hundreds of people do it just the way I do. So I'm just gonna pour myself a beer because it is so hot out here. Uh, this is a little Kostreicher, Kostritzer Schwartz beer. I'll try to get a picture of that later. But it's a little black lager that I found at the local store. It's pretty tasty, even though it's dark. It's actually really crisp and light. So, anyway, I've got some notes here too, just so I don't screw this up. But let me just tell you about the recipe real quick. So I was shooting for, as I mentioned, like a little Hellas lager. Uh, it's not exactly Hellas. I'm not really trying to match a style, but that's what I'm pretending that I'm doing. Um, so this recipe is uh, 10 pounds of Pilsner and one pound of wheat malt. See, already we're off track. Um, and then I'm doing a little bit of warrior hops and some Liberty hops. I mean, even for, even further off track from a, a good, uh, Munich Hellas. Um, but, uh, and then I'm going to ferment this with, uh, the fermentus saf lager WB 3470. I've been curious about that, that yeast, uh, since we went to NHC, uh, one of the first, uh, seminars I went to was on that strain. So I'm, in, I'm interested to try it. So, all right. So how I get started. So over on my right shoulder and your left is uh that's my hlt so what i do I, I treat all my water in one big batch even though we've talked about sort of splitting it up into your mash water and then kettle additions on my system because i've got this 15 gallon keg this is how i do it um, i used to do it in a split batch but just to make my life easier i'm sort of redefining my process so what i do in is i fill up the hlt with 12 gallons of water and then I start heating it and I set up my pump to recirculate and the main reason for that is because then I'm going to add uh, my brewing salts to the water so rather than me stir it uh, I use the pump to recirculate I find that I think it heats a little faster if I recirculate and then when I add the salts I don't have to stir them because usually what I do is I come home from work I get going I water heat and recirculate and let it go uh, I've got two thermometers there uh, in line to watch um, put the salts in, then I go to the garage and I crush the malt. So, um, so that's how I sort of get the water ready. I do two Camden tablets for no special reason. Um, just because it's 12 gallons, I think one is supposed to treat up to 10. So I do two. I've mess been messing around with one or two. It's just it's just such a small amount of pota uh, potassium added by sulfate that um, I can't taste it. I don't I don't think it really has much of a taste. So I I, I do two. Um, and what I do, this is just because I'm, I'm funny, uh, I have a mortar and pestle and so I use that mortar and pestle to crush the two tabs. I just drop them in and I crush them up to turn the tabs into a powder. Reason being for that is I used to just throw a tab in there, but once or twice the tabs actually gotten sucked up into the pump and I don't want to do that. So I crush it into a powder. Um, and then once I have the powder, that goes into the HLT. Um, then I'll weigh out my brewing salts. I have a small little digital blade scale and I'll use a plastic cup as a receptacle to weigh in, tear out the cup and then I have a scoop and I'll weigh out calcium chloride, looks like little small round balls. I think I have a picture of that. Um, and then the, I keep them in mason jars and the other thing is the gypsum. So I'll weigh those out. And for this recipe, I did about eight grams of the calcium chloride and seven grams of the uh, gypsum, and that gives me pretty pretty close to a one-to-one -one sulfite to chloride ratio. 
for this type of lager that I'm sort of going for. I don't know, I didn't have time to research what a Munich Helles water profile looks like, but again, like I've talked about, I don't really care a whole lot. So I know that I just need, a, I need 100 ppm of calcium and that's pretty close to 100 ppm of calcium for, for what I want in this beer, in this experiment. Um, and the chloride and the sulfate, I'm just sort of trying to go equal measure. So I'm going to be multi, I'm going to have enough to support my hops, even though it's not really a hoppy beer. So, um, so there's that. Um, then I'll try to put in some screenshots, but I use Beersmith to calculate the original gravity and how much malt am I going to use and just to keep track of the recipe, the basic recipe. Um, and then the yeast and the timing of the hops to tell me what I'm going to do. So. Uh, later on, uh, I'm not going to show that today, but when I actually do the boil, and the boil kettle is directly behind me, um, I'm going to boil. Uh, you, I'm probably do a 90-minute boil because of the, all the um, the Pilsner malt, even though I'm, I don't really think that's necessary. But I'll probably do a 90-minute boil. I'm going to do uh, uh, some Warrior for 60 minutes, and then we're going to finish off with about 10 uh, with uh, one ounce of Liberty with about 10 minutes to go, just to give me some sort of a noble hop character even though liberty hops aren't german either so we're super off track but that's the way it goes so once all my salts are in the hlt excuse me once all my salts are in the hlt um and i feel like it's well mixed i just wait till i get to my strike temperature and for this beer it's about 160 162. then in my mash tun i actually have in my mash tun i have measured off with a marker uh, the strike volumes that are most common to what I need. Um, that's usually four gallons, four and a half, or five gallons, and I also have an eight gallon mark if I'm trying to do a big beer. Um, so if for this beer, um, for this batch, I'm gonna shoot for four and a half gallons. So I, once it's ready to go, I disconnect the return tube from my recirculation in the HLT. I disconnect this tube, and I bring it over to the mash tun, take the lid off the mash tun and I start filling the mash tun and I just stand there and fill the mash tun. It's no big deal. Um, and then once it's up to four and a half gallons or whatever it is I want my strike water to be, I have to always remember and I try to keep it nearby as I have the lactic acid. So I use, uh, I told you I use Beersmith for the basic recipe, but I use the Bruin, Bruin water from Martin Bruin Guard to help calculate what, what the appropriate mash pH should be for what I'm doing. So in this beer, I'm targeting between 5.2 and 5.4, and that's as specific as I think I want to be. So uh, I take the uh, lactic acid, and I know with the amount of calcium I have, the brewing water spreadsheet tells me I need like one and a half mLs. So I have a little plastic pipette, and I suck up a one and a half mLs, and I squirt that into the mash tun before I add the malt. So my water is now got the right salts in it and it has the right amount of acid in it. I don't bother to check the pH, I'm just winging it based on the spreadsheets, but it seems to be working out. Um, and so then there we go, I don't bother to stir it because then the next step is to add, I, I usually add half of the malt from that I've crushed and I stir that really well, make sure I don't have any dough balls. And once that's stirred in, and I stir in the second half and I get it all well stirred in. Then I will drop a floating thermometer in the mash and I also have a long probe thermometer that I use by hand and I stick that in the mash and just sort of check in a few different places whether or not I'm close to my strike temp or not. Um, you'll see if I shot it right in the video you'll see that I sort of came up a little bit short. I was hoping to get like 149. I'm probably at like uh, 142-ish uh, but that's because I was sort of dilly-dallying with the camera and trying to get a good shot for you guys down in the mash tun. I'm not blaming you, I'm blaming me. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I, I usually know that I don't like to dilly-dally because I'm losing heat because you, when you're using a cooler you got to get it together, get it in there, trust the spreadsheets and usually it works out. So that's why I have the floating thermometer in there is because once I seal it up and it's all closed up I just let it rest and I will take a look maybe 10 or 15 minutes into the mash because now that thermometer is really equilibrated to the temperature. My, that long probe thermometer isn't always the quickest to react to uh, the temperature change and I know it's getting close and it's slowing down. I figure I'm pretty close and I shut it down. What I'm really looking for is to make sure I'm not way over temp um, and if that's the case I just keep stirring. I'll just stir, stir, stir um, uh, until I can drop the temp down and that's when I'll then pull the th floating thermometer out because it's equilibrated pretty nice and uh, check it out. So so yeah, wow, so that's all the notes. I can get rid of this. I'm gonna have another sip of beer. 
Um, so that's how I do it. That's how I incorporate measuring out my water, adding the salts, using a spreadsheet to estimate what the pH is going to be. If I have to adjust with acid rather than add more calcium, I do that uh, after I add the water to the mash tun. Um, the grain goes in, stir it up, just like everybody else, uh, and it's good to go. So, uh, so that's going to be the end of this video. I'm not going to carry through and show you the rest of the brew process. It's pretty straightforward. I batch sparge. Um, if you want, uh, leave in the comments below. We can do uh, another video where I sort of take it from this point and show you my batch sparge process. Uh, use some buckets to collect and, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, that might be interesting. If you want to see it, let me know. But this video is already uh, pushing the time frame that I wanted. So uh, I'm flying solo tonight. Uh, John's on vacation and I'm here sweating it out with some Schwartz beer. So please comment, like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We do these videos every week, every Wednesday or Thursday if I'm running late. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it. And cheers and brew on.